Welcome to what will hopefully be a fun, entertaining and educational video on the Black Lying opening. Ah, Don't know why I did that, but you know, giving you a bit of Black Lying there. And this is a very interesting opening um, that Black can play against, I would say, mainly E4. You can also play against 1D4, but this DVD is concentrating against 1E4. Now, the black line is is really, I would say, um, a rather naughty brother or cousin of the Philadorf opening, um, and it's a version, a rather aggressive, should I say, and naughty brother. The kind of brother who's done something a bit, a bit mischievous, you know, and maybe ended up in some trouble in his life. He's a bit brave. He's a bit foolhardy. He's got a good soul, a good heart, but he does do naughty things. Um, maybe some of you out there have a brother like that. And it's when Black plays the Philidorf kind of setup, but in principle with a G5 push. I was first um, told about this opening, which I, I wasn't aware of, by a friend of mine in the English chess scene, Kevin Winter, who started to play this opening after he read a book by two Dutch players on the opening. Um, a very interesting book, sold a lot of copies, called The Black Lion, and I've used this book a bit to help me out with some ideas here. Myself, I heard this from Kevin, I've been playing it on and off for about five years now, and I'm going to include a number of my games in this DVD to show you my thoughts, show you my thinking about the opening. But if you want to win with Black, if you want to win, you want to get an interesting, unique position, there cannot be a better opening than the Black Lion. So it's a really exciting way to play against 1e4. Um, now, let me just show you kind of the opening moves so we can um, just have a little introduction in this video to the opening. And I'm also going to tell you a little overview of some tactics you need to be aware of in the opening, the plans that we're going to look at during the course of the DVD, what I think you should be doing. And basically, this introduction is an overview of the next 20 or so games we're going to look at. Now, historically, um, the first time I could find that this opening was played was between Canal versus Brinkman. And Brinkman maybe is the first person in my database to have played this in 1929. Now, the moves we're going to use to get to the opening is going to be E4, and we're going to play D6, so this flexible and interesting move, D4, obviously the only move that's going to test us and now knight to f6 knight to c3 and here we're concentrating on knight on b to d7 and what i'm trying to do is give you a very aggressive repertoire from black one where all the pieces remain on the board where you're going to get lots of tactical exciting play and one where you can play for a win with black that's my aim of this dvd to give you a good winning repertoire aggressive repertoire with black and this dvd will cover everything you need to know to have a repertoire against one e4 and after knight bd7 the main moves we're going to look at in this dvd is knight to f3 which we're going to start the dvd by looking at this move which is the most common move and the black line setup is where we go e5 and now bishop c4 is probably the most active and best move for white bishop to e7 and now something like castles c6 in the black line a little tip you don't castle too soon because this gets in the way of one of our main ideas and one of our main ideas after a4 is at some point to play h6 and g5 um, this is one of the main things that we're going to be looking at in this DVD. And how do you go about playing this? Well, we'll come on to this in more detail later, but generally the way we're going to play this is with Queen C7, H6, Knight to F8, and G5. This very interesting idea. I'm also going to recommend after the move A4, after I've done my own research on this opening, I also think that A5 here is a very good move from black because white often gets quite a lot of play on the queen side by pushing his a pawn and sometimes his b pawn so one of my main recommendations actually after the move a4 
is that you first just play a5 and then you continue with the black line setup which is queen c7 h6 knight f8 and g5 so this a5 move is also i think a very good way to try to stop white's counterplay on the king's on the queen side before you get going with your black line setup but what is what is really the black line and the black line is really okay let's void a5 for the time being is really where you go queen c7 and then after something like maybe h3 you go h6 first this is a good move um, there's some little move order things you have to be very wary of for example if you go knight to f8 too soon then you will get hit by a knight g5 move and one thing to always watch out for is knight to g5 and this really puts you under some immense pressure on f7 so you should go h6 first and then in this type of structure after h6 bishop e3 now i prefer going knight to f8 first normally rather than g5 first because i find the move knight to f8 a bit more flexible i don't always think g5 is a main move but just to show you one of the setups that we're going to cover after knight to f8 something like rook to e1 now the black line proper is with this aggressive roar of a move g5 and this is why i'm saying it's a rather naughty cousin or brother of the philodorf because g5 is such an aggressive move at such an early stage but i think it's very interesting opening ideal for club players ideal if you want to win and get an aggressive game and what is the point of this structure well you're going to try to go knight g6 g4 rook g8 and attack basically white's king now we go knight to f8 in order to bring this knight around to the f4 square so this is why you do the knight on f8 maneuver i should point out that the move g5 in my opinion is much stronger when white has played h3 because when white has played h3 when we do go g5 g4 we have a way to open up the white king side because then white has to do something with a pawn on h3 white either has to take on g4 or allow us to take on h3 so the black line approach with g5 in my eyes becomes stronger when white has played h3 so this is a tip to remember as well and this is the main idea really so you're going to go knight g6 rook g8 g5 knight to f4 everything on the king side um often later on it's worth thinking where you put your king and this is one of the openings where you rarely castle for black you might later on want to put your king to f8 g7 h7 so you tuck it away over there because then your other rook will hopefully join in the attack on g8 but you don't think about casting in this opening so it's maybe one of the only opening dvds where you don't castle which i do you know another opening dvd where you don't castle i i don't know many so this is how brave and naughty this opening is and how exciting it is now let's just have a look at some things you you might need to look you know be wary of and you might need to try so in the actual game this historical game we got to the black line opening by a, a rather bizarre move order as i'm going to play through here which i don't recommend you go for i don't recommend you play this move order but we will have a look at this game a bit later on bishop e7 and now a4 c6 is one of our main positions the other position we'll be concentrating on through the course of this dvd is a5 first at some point you play a5 to stop the white getting too much space on this side but after c6 what kind of things do we need to be wary of well there's there's a trick that you have to know if you're going to play the black line there's something you need to avoid and that trick is when white either puts his bishop on b2 or puts his bishop on e3 and then combines this plan with rook to e1 there's a trick of him sacrificing on e5 at some moment let me just demonstrate this so let's say after c6 white goes b3 now if we continue with our black lying plan of we always go queen c7 first bishop b2 now i as i mentioned before 
prefer the move knight to f8 and I particularly prefer knight to f8 once white has put his bishop on b2 or a3. A little rule I have actually is that if white puts his bishop over on the queen side and moves it off the c1 h6 diagonal I don't actually even play g5 often. I go knight to g8, knight to f8, knight to g6 and knight to f4 straight away because I think it increases in power this maneuver because white can no longer take the knight when it gets to f4. So my suggestion would be to go knight to f8 against bishop b2. But if you insist on going g5 in this position, let's say white goes rook to e1, and this is when the alarm bell sh should ring. White's got his rook on e1 and he's got his bishop on b2. So the move knight to f8 here trying to play the typical idea of manoeuvring it to f4 is a blunder. Why is it a blunder here? And this is one thing you always need to watch out for. It's a blunder because white can capture on e5 twice. Pawn takes, pawn takes, and now knight takes e5. And this is a very dangerous position for black. You really have to take on e5, and now knight to d5 leads to a very good and probably winning position for white because f6 is probably going to drop the bishop on b2 is very strong so just watch out for that tactic i'm just telling you things you need to watch out for when we get into the action what else do you need to watch out for well a similar tactic here as i mentioned is if instead of b3 what if white plays the same idea but with a bishop on e3 so how can we do that well in this normal setup let's say white plays h3 which is a useful idea because he's trying to stop your knight g4 idea if bishop e3 knight g4 is generally a good response and now if we do the same kind of plan so um let me just get to this queen c7 bishop e3 now if we go g5 here and again if white plays rook e1 white needs to play rook e1 in order to get this sacrifice on e5 to work because the rook has got to support the white e pawn but again the alarm bell should be ringing and if we now go knight to f8 it's the same tactic pawn takes e5 knight takes e5 and if queen takes d e5 bishop to d4 and again this is extremely dangerous queen c7 e5 and when the knight moves e6 and we can see again that white's plan is destroying your position so this is really the bad news that you you know just some bad points you need to um avoid but as long as you're as long as you don't play knight to f8 to court you know casually in these positions you should be okay and my general rule is that i nearly always play knight to f8 first because i think this gives me more flexibility i don't have to commit to playing g5 if i don't want to for example here again after rookie one white is now threatening the double capture on e5 so g5 is a mistake because of that but i can simply go knight to g6 now and this is not a particularly you know it's not always the g5 black line position but when you play this opening one thing i really have to i think if you want to be successful is flexibility you can't always play g5 it's good in some positions but not all positions so you have to remain flexible um so what else do we need to know well um one of the reasons i um after a4 i'm going to look at a5 is that white can often be very annoying with his pushes a5 and b4 so i'm just telling you first of all the things you need to watch out for for example let's have a look at this line with h3 again and now knight to f8 so this is my improved move order i have one game we'll look at very shortly which went knight d2 bad move because now i'm able to play g5 remember g5 gains in strength when white has played h3 because we have an easier way to open up that side i don't have to worry about double tactics on e5 now and i have one game that went here but white now played the move b4 and ideas we keep an eye out for is b4 b5 
and a5, a6. This is how white is going to counter our king side attack with a queen side attack. But is, isn't it more fun to attack on the king side rather than the queen side? Because if our attack works, we're going to checkmate. If our opponent's attack works on the queen side, he may even win a pawn or something, but it's not going to be checkmate. So I think it's always more fun to attack on the king side. That's why the black line is such an attractive opening. How many times do you get a chance to go crazy attacking against your opponent's king from the go in the opening? And you can in the black line. Um, so again, let's just have a look how these opening moves should start. So my opening suggestion, the way we're going to play the move order, is with d6, knight to f6. This threatens the e4 pawn. And now, rather than playing e5 here, which allows... We're not going to look at this in this DVD, because this allows white to play the boring pawn takes pawn and queen takes queen. I don't. I'm, this DVD is not going to be boring. I'm not going to look at boring lines, so I'm going to avoid this move. That is why, after knight c3... We are playing knight on b, d7, and the idea here is to play e5, avoid the exchange of queens. Other moves we look at later on are f4 from white, which is a critical move. We also look at g4 from white, which is very interesting, but all these positions get very unbalanced. But to start with, the main position, and the one thing I think you need to know first, is what you do after knight to f3. Now you have to play in the center with e5. Bishop c4, in my eyes, is clearly white's best move because the bishop is well placed here. What should you play here? I think it's correct to now develop your bishop. We, have, we look at ideas with bishop takes f7 check, something you always have to watch out for. Remember, watch out for bishop takes f7 and knight g5. If you play the right move order, these don't worry you. If you get your move order mixed up, they can worry you. We look at this later on. But the main line is castles, and here I recommend you go c6. In some positions, threatening b5, so I think white should go a4. And even now, queen c7 or a5, queen c7 is the main move. And here, again, your main setup is black, is to play h6 next. So, first of all, you play h6, then you play knight to f8. And against h3, I nearly always recommend g5, but in some positions, we go knight to g6 without g5. And that's really what this DVD is going to be looking at, this aggressive, fun opening system that you can play as black against e4. Um, back to the historical game uh, between Canel and Brinkman. How did this game go? Well, in our structure, our normal structure, the first time I saw this plan in action was this game, and here knight to f8 was played, knight to e1, and here Brinkman played the black line move g5. And this is really the main black line, f3, knight to g6, queen f2, knight to f4. And you can already see that this is the main idea we're trying to achieve with our knight maneuver. And we're trying to get some open lines with g4 later on and start an attack on that side of the board. So that is what this opening DVD is going to be about. Hope you enjoy it. It's going to be a lot of fun, a lot of tactics involved with this, a lot of aggressive chess. I'll try to do my best to give you a good opening with computer analysis the main what i'm mainly going to be trying to teach you in this dvd is the ideas the concepts then i what i recommend you do after that is to go home and do a bit of homework yourself you can try this opening out after i do this dvd it should cover absolutely everything you need and good luck i hope you enjoyed the dvd we'll go into the action we're going to the games now got some real stunners for you and uh, I hope you enjoyed this DVD. Bye for now.